the blog for this project. There we go. Wonderful. Super. Okay. So yeah, this is just an opportunity to touch base and share. I apologize. We didn't do this more over the summer, but I think everybody got busy. So um, we're going to try to do it the last this month and then October and November. So we'll just check in and kind of see how, um, how people are feeling how things are going. Um, and like I said, if you could kind of, if you can think about it, and I know I kind of put you on the spot. I should have emailed this ahead of time. Um, you know, what's something that's worked well for you? And then maybe what's something that you're kind of, it's a challenge. You're, you're kind of, you know, still trying to navigate or figure out how to work through. Hey, Mary, welcome. We're just getting started. We're just doing a, um, we're going to do like a round robin and go around and um, have folks just share, um, you know, what you've been able to do with the training so far. Um, I know you're, you were trying to figure out too how to lead walks with kids. And we were saying, even if it's for folks who work with kids, um, that's that's fine. And I know you're looking at trying to weave it into curriculum and um, figuring out what that could look like at Eagle Bluff. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to check in with each of you and hear kind of how things are going for you. And because I don't want to be, I don't want to keep you here a real long time, let's limit it to just like, you know, five minutes for each person, maybe something like that. You don't even need five minutes. <laughs> so maybe I'll just call people as I see you on the screen. So we'll, Laura, you show up first. So you want to go ahead first? <laughs> sure. Um, so what, um, because I'm at a school and my job is mindfulness teacher, it's pretty easy for me to incorporate nature um, into um, what I'm doing. So I have taken, but I, I like doing these walks with smaller groups of kids. I find that more impactful. I've tried, I've done, I certainly do things in nature with the whole class, but it's not as much of a, you know, nature therapy walk. So what I've started doing is when I have a little time, like on Friday afternoons, um, seeing if a teacher wants to give me like five kids um, because often on Friday afternoons, they're kind of done and they're not doing a lot. And um, then, oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, um, sorry, I just got distracted. So I've just been taking like five kids at a time and I have like 45 minutes. So it's not like the whole time but I'm, I've been able to do pop with them. And then um, we usually do like one activity. And the thing that I found that works the best is having them have things to work with. So like pop with a rock or pop, you know, with something. And then also bringing tools out like binoculars, notebooks and colored pencils, um, you know, magnifying glasses so that, they can, um, so that they can really just have something to do. And that's worked really well. And then I've done the closing circle and had like cookies and lemonade. Um, I think the, the hardest part is just finding time, you know, because, and yeah, just, just finding time. But the teachers here are pretty open and flexible. So it's been nice. And then Sarah's, you know, working at Riverside once a month. And so we're trying to find ways to work together too, which is really nice. So I'll say that I have a lot of flexibility, so I'm lucky. Thank you. And uh -huh. yeah, those of us who were able to gather on Saturday at Bucky's, we kind of did a little bit of this already, but I thought it'd be nice to share again. If you were at that retreat, share again, um, just so everybody can kind of hear the conversation. If you don't have access to um, being able to you know, voice in, you could just type something in the chat too, that's fine. Um, if you want to contribute that way. Oh, I see some people are. Nicole, can you help moderate that too? Because I get going and then I forget. So Mary's camera doesn't work or her microphone and Madeline is in her car, but she can listen. So mm -hmm. if you're able to type in great, don't die trying to type something in the chat box. <laughs> Obviously. Um, also, if you're having trouble finding audiences to guide walks for, let me know and I can try to help with that too. I know Jade had reached out before and said, you know, she'd be interested if there was groups that were looking for walks around the Rochester area. So if you need help finding audiences, let me know. Okay, Nicole, you wanna go next? Sure, um, I've been able to do three um, so far. And Laura, I'm like you too. It's like being able to incorporate it 
and not do a, an entire like three hour experience, but being able to at least mind the mindfulness pieces and um, <clears throat> having them do something or a piece of paper or a journal with them helps focus. Um, especially I'm working with the ALC. I did it in April and it was a little bit of a disaster. I think I, I did a debrief with my group, um, but it was the teachers that were the worst actually not listening or stuff, but um, I'm doing them again in October. So in a couple of weeks and I really want to do more of a, I want to do like a scavenger hunt type of thing. Sarah, you saw some, what of what I was working with at uh, last week but um so yeah and I so I have uh I've done four actually and then I'll have two more one this month and one actually at the end of November um but again it's really adapting it for the audience especially with children and youth Yeah, and I appreciate the like disaster that you mentioned because that's kind of like just I mean as long as it's a safe disaster, Yeah, well, right? well, yeah, But yeah, you but learn it is, from you learn from trial and error. yeah. For sure. Awesome. Alexa, are you able to share? Yes. Yeah. And sorry, I'm not on camera. I desperately need to buy a new laptop because mine no longer wants to connect. So um, yeah, I'll be off camera today. But um, yeah, as far as um, what's been working well for me this year, um, so I had decided that I I kind of wanted to work on sharing the practice with just larger groups of like um, people that haven't aren't typically gathering together. So I've just been sending out invites to um, a lot of the people that I know locally to encourage them to come to a walk once a month um, and to bring folks that they know, um, especially younger people too. Um, that's worked really well for me. I think I've guided four walks, either three or four walks so far, and I have one coming up this Sunday. And um, what I really enjoyed about it is that I'm getting such a mix of ages and people from different backgrounds. So sometimes I'll have a walk with, you know, some friends that I've known for like five to 10 years, but then there'll also be a family member and then a younger uh, kid there and um, people in the community that I, I haven't had the chance to really meet and don't know the other people there too. Um, so that's been interesting has kind of helped me build a little bit more confidence to guide people that I'm not as familiar with since I had been pretty slow to start guiding people I, I didn't know with forest bathing. Um, one of our bigger successes so far with guiding, um, the place that I work, Project Optimist, has been doing a biophilia series this year. And so we were able to incorporate a forest bathing walk into that event. Um, and so that was interesting because it was a very different audience than I was expecting. But I actually ended up having a woman in the class who also trained with the ANFT uh, back in 2017. And so it was interesting to like meet somebody else in forest bathing and hear about her experience and then get feedback from her about how it felt too. Um, and she was very jealous of our cohort and said she wished that she had the opportunity to get, uh, train with all people in Minnesota too. Um, beyond that, I have also been trying to explore some like alternative partnerships that are, um, again, not with like one single organization, but just kind of in the hopes of getting the word out a little bit more about forest bathing and trying to draw in adults who then could work with children and bring that to, to their places of work. And um, at the end of November, I uh, now have the opportunity, I'm going to be guiding up in Duluth at Hartley Park with a documentarian who made a 20 minute forest bathing documentary. And he's now trying to connect with nature centers across the country to help show people what forest bathing is and also raise awareness about it. So we're working together on his first event um, and we'll be doing a film showing and then guiding. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I think as far as challenges go, um, probably the biggest challenge for me has just been like getting larger group sizes. Uh, the biggest size I've had so far was 12 people and they're as small as usually like four to five people. Um, and I kind of want the experience of guiding a larger group so that you know, just a little bit more opportunity to like manage the, with the time and things like that and getting more comfortable with like having a larger group of people and adapting invitations to make it all work. Um, and uh, also a lot of the people that I've been inviting will like commit to coming and then last minute 
not come for various reasons, whether it's like fear of the bugs being bad or the weather being a little too cold. So I'm still trying to like show people that existing outdoors with forest bathing is a very comfortable experience and um, really trying to figure out how to tell the story of what forest bathing is prior to people coming to a walk so they feel more encouraged to come. Yeah, that's what I've been up to. Awesome. I know you're, you did a walk up in St. Cloud. Was that the one with Project Optimist? That got a lot of media coverage. Yeah. Um, we got a, a story in the St. Cloud Times, but I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think Minnesota uh, Public Radio also did a radio segment about it. Um, so yeah, we got, we did get some good coverage, which is great. That's awesome. And then also you've, it must be through your personal relationships and connections, but you've had um, several walks where you have a fairly good response from the LGBTQ plus community, which is neat to see. So I don't know if that's intentional or if that's just through people, you know, or how that's going. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it was a little intentional. Um, I, I think the, the demographic of people I'm like most interested in working with are folks from the LGBTQ community. Um, and then I've also been really diving into, um, Sarah, I've been meaning to share a, a book recommendation with you. I'm reading a book about social prescribing. Uh -huh. Um, and they talk about, oh yeah, I've read, I sent this book to everybody actually, sorry. Um, so I've been trying to like focus on those two avenues of like the queer community and providing that for them. And um, it just kind of naturally worked out that a lot of my personal circle down in Winona is a part of the queer community. And so they've been really helping get the word out to more folks. Um, so yeah, I've definitely had a pretty high showing of LGBTQ folks at my walks. It's been really special. Yeah, that's great. Wonderful, thank you. Angela, I see you just popped on. We're just going around and we're sharing basically like what's working for you as far as, you know, if you've led some walks, what's a challenge. Um, if you need help finding more audiences, I don't think you do because you're pretty connected around Winona area. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of doing a quick share. Everybody gets five minutes. Do you want to go or you want to wait? You want me to circle back around? Um, maybe circle back around. My kids are busy doing a bunch of stuff and it's really noisy. <laughs> it sounds good. Jade, then you're up next on the screen there. Um, so far, I've led three walks, um, mainly with people in the agency that I work for, for so through Fernbrook. Um, I've done one walk with one of our counties, so down in um, Casson, and then I did one for a group that one of my coworkers was running for kiddos. Um, that one was a little tricky because most of the kiddos had ADHD and so didn't really want to slow down and <laughs> um, do some more mindfulness-based practices, but I, I took the cards that were part of um, the backpack, so it was like the Find It cards, um, and so the kids really actually enjoyed that, finding different things within nature. Um, so that was cool to see. Um, I would say, too, the difficulty is getting people to come um, unless it's like a pre-prescribed group. Um, so, yeah, that's been a little bit difficult, but it, making it work. So what kind of response are you hearing from your colleagues at Fernbrook? I mean, and the ones that have participated, were they like, oh, yeah, I see the value of this? Or are they still kind of like, eh, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. Um, I've actually done a presentation on it as well, just to get people to have more understanding about it. Um, and the reception was really great. Um, people enjoyed it. People got really into it. So it was awesome to see. Super great. Yeah. We like try to, I try to imagine like five, 10 years down the road, if this becomes more mainstream. And I know Fernbrook does a lot in the schools. So it'll be interesting to see how it evolves. Um, thank you. Luisa, and Mary is, oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say Mary wrote a lot in the chat. So just so you know. Luisana, you want to go next? Sure, sure, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I already incorporated the Forest Baiting Walk, like a, a program for my organization, Huellas Latinas. Um, I am leading program for 
the Minneapolis Park Foundation, I get a grant for five walks. I already, no, six walks. I already did uh, three. Uh, for walks, I um, partnership with different Latin organizations too, like organization to serve for mental health or have other kind of program for youth or others, Latin olders. Um, the experience has been great. Um, I think the two challenge for me was doing the walk with one organization who bring all the staff. Um, and and my opinion was a little harder. Looks like they was just not very open for the walk, just only to be there because the supervisor didn't buy. And that was a, a little harder. And the other um, is the timing. So they come back before I call the invitation is done. Um, but besides that, I think had the experience has been great. I hear very good things from people who really open for the experience. I hear very good comments from people who is not really outside. They don't like being in nature. Uh, after a while or after the activity, they, they feel comfortable and see the nature in other ways. I have the same experience um, where there are times where you'll send them out for their invitation and, you know, you don't need to look at your watch. I'll call you back when it's time to gather. And they're already gathered and talking way before I'm going to call them back. And I, I'm fine with that. I remember um, when I was going through the training, one of our trainers talked about re reiterated, you know, what's meant to be for you is what you'll get out of it. And if that means coming together with others and talking, and that's what they need right so yes. um where we we almost because i get it too as a as a guide feeling like hey guys i'm on a meeting down here so ch -ch -ch, um <laughs> feeling kind of like um you know I, I maybe i didn't give a good enough prompt or something <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not keeping them engaged and uh if they come and gather and start talking that's that's what they need i guess i'm trusting that Yes, um, yes, trust on that too. But yes, I, I try to remember that the some edges. So yeah. <laughs> that is an edge. Yeah, it can yeah. be an edge. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, and it's great to see that Minneapolis Parks has embraced this. So that that's exciting. It's super okay. exciting. Oh, I didn't... sorry, I didn't mean to uh, go ahead. <laughs> No, I just say it's super exciting to have this project for Latino community here because also another organization is calling and be interested in, in work for other groups and things like that. So I think it's open new doors. Oh, for sure. Yes, I think so too. As you as you lead a group and then you see that they go out and talk with their colleagues, it just it keeps spreading. People keep recommending it. And that's how we grow the movement, right? Yeah. Thank you. So Mary is next, and I know she's having um, issues with being able to um, talk, but she posted some stuff in the chat box. You all can see there if you click on the chat. So she's working on implementing components of forest therapy guiding into the classes that they lead at Eagle Bluff Environmental Learning Center and experimenting with the best options for their setting. Um, she said it's really interesting because we only see kids three hours total before they're off to their next class. Um, but she said, but she's had good luck in implementing WIM and POP and then a few partnership invitations and then also put invitational components into class curriculum, um, which have been used by other instructors. Um, and then she said she may be guiding this winter for a handful of local middle schools as part of their science curriculum. So that's pretty cool. And also guided some adults for their girls weekend. <laughs> I'm sure that was fun. So that's neat to see how this can work in that um, kind of residential environmental learning center setting, but then also taking it into the nearby community. So cool. We'll keep we'll keep watching what you're doing down there, Mary. If you uh, develop a specific curriculum, it'd be cool if that's something that could be shared with um, our cohort, too. OK, next on here is Madeline. I don't think Madeline was able to talk. Right. She said that she could listen. Yeah, she's car. in the car, listening capacity. Okay, she's driving. 
Yeah. Okay. We and I know Madeline was um at the retreat on Saturday, and um she's been able to do some walks for a lot, mostly a lot of her friends that have kids and toddlers. I mean, these are like some little little guys, um, and she was able to use a bunch of different things from the backpacks. So she really appreciated having those, like the cards that Jade men mentioned, um, using the marbles. I, she used a few different things from the backpacks. So that she said with the little kids, that was very, very helpful. I know. Um, and then Gloria, Gloria's next on the list. Are you able to talk, Gloria? Hi. Yes. Sorry. I was driving from the veterinary when, when I plug in. So yeah. Um, Hope everybody's doing well. It's great to hear everybody's stories and accomplishments. Very inspiring. Um, so far, I um, I've been uh, I I just um started registering some nature and um some walks with community education through the school district. So as a way that you know to kind of because kind of get the school district more like hey come on join us um so that, that has been good and I led two so far I one I had to do it on Saturday I was not able to join you guys some um but so far I had four walks and um two of them were with kids and adults um, during the summer and the other two were were no kids, but there were some parents and there was uh, a teacher involved. So, um, and I did mention like how, even though there was no kids, how they can utilize nature with their kids. And I had my backpack and they were so like, wow, this is really cool. You know, like what you can do like with the um, color, you know, those uh, um, color samples that you got us from from like I don't know painting store I told them you can go to Walmart and just grab one and take them you know take your kids out so I kind of give them ideas you know like um to take home and they also some of them were very interested in the books um so yeah somehow trying to you know um trying to also you know, in every walk, I tell them about Project um, Get Outdoors and how they've been really helpful to make this happen and grateful. And so, yeah, just right now, it's um, really um, working with community ed. And um, unfortunately, I don't have, I wish I can do more, but I'm in grad school. I just started grad school. So I'm mothering. I'm in grad school. I'm working. I'm trying to get the walks out there. So little by little, but I'm hopeful that um, it's getting out there more. So, and then some of the challenges, um, yeah, I get, again, with time and wanting to do more than what I wish, you know, but I can only do so much. Um, but being in the, program for grad school has also kind of like helped me um, integrate a little bit of that which is trauma-informed social work into my walk in a way that apply my more mindfulness and um, yeah kind of weaving that together um, and see in the future how can I utilize that learning with the walks and um yeah thank you so much i don't know if i'm missing anything else sarah oh that's good you, where are you doing your um your social work studies through what college winona state okay because yeah. that will be interesting to see if you're able to have conversations with faculty as you're taking courses to kind of you know if 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 they would bring this into the classes they offer i feel like it fits with social work and education and so many other places departments within the colleges um or even just student um student living right kids in the dorms and stuff like that so um since you're taking classes and talking with faculty maybe eventually something will grow from that 
Hopefully, yeah. Actually, when I share about my what I'm doing, I'm doing the orientation class. <clears throat> the the professor wanted to learn more about. She's like, um, "Will you be willing to share more about nature and forest therapy?" I'm like, "Yeah, absolutely." You know, and so they were. Yeah, she was interested in so people can have more awareness of what it is and. We'll see how that inter interweaves. I'm sure there's going to get there sometime, <laughs> somehow. Yeah, well, it would be really cool is if, the because you've got Winona State, we've got St. Mary's University, we have the uh -huh. tech colleges, and then we have uh -huh. University of Minnesota Rochester in Rochester. Uh -huh. If our cohort somehow could be contracted, like maybe it's through Project Go, but everybody gets paid uh -huh. to actually assist with their, their um new student orientations each year where we actually do a day of forest bathing for all incoming students yeah like that could be a really cool thing in the future it's just figuring out how to scale that right yeah <laughs> that would be a lot of college students but yeah so there's good ideas yeah, yeah and <laughs> i see how college kids could really benefit from this because i mean yeah right so there's yeah there's potential my yeah my challenge is time so i'm just trying to right now balance everything so i can really be present for each one of my my work for sure. yeah thank you Wonderful. well yeah thank you for all you're doing and yeah good luck keeping all that balance focus on you and your little boy first right <laughs> main priority uh, thank you yeah um angela were you able to share or is it still kind of a zoo over there <laughs> Uh, no, it, it calmed down. They were just got home from school and were doing a bunch of things for me. So, um, let me think today has been kind of a wonky day. My phone hasn't been working because of, there's something going on with Verizon. I can't find the original email that got sent out. <laughs> like, am I supposed to even be on this meeting? Like maybe I'm not supposed to be on this meeting right now. <laughs> Jeez. you are yeah it's all it's just all the healing fo forest cohort members and just a check-in to share where you're, how you're feeling if you've been able to do any walks how they're going what's kind of a challenge for you yeah um you well, want to share. I, I I was really busy over the weekend um with boats and bluegrass here in town and I was working I work some really late shifts. And so my, my sleep schedule was super off. I felt like I hadn't slept for 24 hours. Um, and I woke up this morning at 1130 and my phone hasn't been working. So, <laughs> and I know there were people that were trying to get a hold of me because they were finally able to get a hold of me through like the Instagram phone. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I did one walk with Gloria. Um, and that was, it was great. It was fantastic. Um, I highly recommend if you can do it with a partner, man, it's just, it's really nice to be able to bounce off of each other. Um, that was super, super helpful and very, very much, uh, I think needed and suggested that if people did that on Sunday, like, <laughs> on like Sunday afternoon like late early evening or something you know that it would like help their week go that much better <laughs> and I'm like oh that's so true it's so true um and but that was the one walk that I did and I know Anne out at Prairie Island has been trying to get me to do walks out there and I just um it just doesn't feel right for me. I don't know why. It just it feels kind of weird being out in that space and in that way. But um, yeah, I'm not really sure. Gloria and I did the walk out there on the one the other side of the park, and um, that space it felt it felt good. Um, I, I think it was just because I was with. Gloria and um, the people that were there were so open and inviting um, and I think with the other the other area of the campground I think I'm 
I just don't, I don't want to do it with a lot of people. I don't want to do a walk with a lot of people. And I think that's what I'm nervous about. It's like, I just, I just don't feel like I could handle any more than 10 people at a time. So, um, yeah, if anybody's got any tips on how to keep it small, I heard, I heard people, I heard people saying something about having a hard time for people showing up, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think like you can, you can set a limit too. You could say like five people is the max. You could set a limit um, if that's what you want to do. And I know like some of the others have said people like I, so I've been lucky to be able to work with partnering organizations. So they, they pay project go a flat rate for me to come lead a walk. And then it's for free. It's open up to their members or their, you know, they advertise in their community. And when it's free, people sign up and then they don't show up. But I mean, maybe they do that if they pay too. (laughs) Yeah. So that does happen. You'll have like 12 people sign up and maybe seven show up. But I think Ben and Manuela said that happens pretty much all the time. Like you really can't get around that. Okay. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking about um, talking to the Marine Art Museum about doing one there because the gardens, the gardens there are so beautiful. Um, and they've just done such a nice job. I mean, we used to have this beautiful space down by the lake park. It was a rose garden. Oh. Um, and that was many, like when I was growing up, it was just beautiful. And that would have been perfect. But that's all gone. We don't really have a space like that anymore in Winona that I can think of. You know? Yeah. So, but yeah. the Marine Art Museum has done such a beautiful job with their landscaping over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is a beautiful spot. They they do tell me in the summer the chiggers are really bad. So you just want to make sure you got bug spray. Oh, well, I'm I'm on the I'm on the whole like for me <laughs> forest bathing. I'm thinking right now is perfect. Right? Yeah, no yeah. kidding. Yeah, Good time do, it, of year. do it from like October and November and then maybe have like a winter walk and then like start it in spring when it's still chilly sure. so that there's not as many bugs. I'm starting to become uh, not <laughs> not a fan of bugs. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's hard to be mindful when you're sitting there with mosquitoes going in, in your ears, you know. Right. Yeah. I did one walk and where they were so thick, it was just absolutely crazy. People had the nets on, they had every part of their body covered and people were still getting bit. And I'm like, how can people focus? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. This is crazy. I just want to leave. Right. And there's like, you can, you can teach people and demonstrate how to be you know, we talk about safe outdoors, but there are certain places where no matter how much bug spray you put on, you're still going to have bugs in your nose and in your ear holes and it's not enjoyable. Like head nets is the only way to get through that situation. And that's probably not the best setting then to do forest bathing. Right, right. I don't know. I I hate using my phone. I was trying to get on my computer and it wasn't letting me so I can see stuff Oh, you just muted yourself. Do you want me to read the chat to you, yeah. Angela? Yeah, I was trying to read. Okay. Okay, Alexis I got said, it. You, did you see it? I got it pulled up now, finally. I okay. hate the chickadee trail. Okay. Thanks, Alexa. Yeah. I. Yeah. Yeah, my so, phone my phone is oh, still sorry. reading SOS. Oh my goodness. Anything else you wanted to share, Angela? Um, let me think. So the only thing that I do want to share is that it's orange shirt day in yeah. recognition in recognition of the native um children in the boarding oh. schools. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Um, yeah, it's national, it's like Canada is really big on it and um, it's starting to come down into the United States now what I've noticed 
Um, so it's just recognizing the children that are more missing or murdered in the sense of boarding school epidemic. Okay. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. Yeah. yeah is that a new, sharing that. Yeah. Is that a newer um, like recognition or has that been going around a while in Canada? I think it's been going around for a while, but um, it really took fruition when that um, the 218 children or whatever were found at that one school up there. Right. Yeah. And so it's the significance of it behind it was this as, as a native youth that was taken to boarding school and um, she had this orange shirt and it was taken away from her. Um, and there is a story that is kind of filtering out there that was shared about her story. And I've shared it a couple of times. I usually share it every year on my Facebook and my Instagram and different things like that, just to get that recognition out there. Um, my grandmother didn't go to boarding school, but she was taken into an orphanage. Mm. Um, so and I've heard so many stories like that, similar stories like that, too, about how children were taken and put into forced homes or forced labor or, you know, different things at young ages. Right. Yeah, it's it's horrible. And that trauma is handed down generation after generation after generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, Yeah. So I'm just wearing an orange shirt in recognition of that. Okay. Well, to switch topics then, um, just a couple kind of reminders. Um, so if the, the goal is if you can do six walks before the end of November, I know if it's, it's going to be a real challenge for you, reach out and talk with me. I know Mary's having trouble with that. So she's trying to figure out like alternative things she can do to kind of compensate for that. As you lead walks, if you can fill out one of those debriefs, I don't know if you want me to re-email that out. It's just a one-sided thing. It's a quick kind of summary of like how many people were on your walk? What was the composition? Was it kids, adults, a mix? And you know, what what's something that worked well? What is something that was like, eh, you know, I, I don't know if I'll do that again. So it, it just takes a few minutes to fill one of those out. Um, and then also the final presentation will be due by the end of November. And that's just like a five to 10 minute presentation. You can either do it where you're literally just talking into your phone and recording a video, or you could do more like a PowerPoint that you self record. Cause you know, you can, you can record yourself with the narration and stuff on a PowerPoint. Um, I mean, if you're able to do something with some gra some visuals, that would be great, but it's not, it's not a bad thing if you just record yourself talking. And once again, I can resend that out, but I had some criteria kind of, you know, what was your journey through the training and how have you been able to use it? And kind of similar with the debriefs, what's working well? Um, what's What have you learned from some of the challenges? Um, what suggestions you have for other people in your field who might be interested in forest therapy and bringing it into their work? So um, I know in Olmsted County, we have five of you that kind of service the Olmsted County area. And so Olmsted County Public Health contributed $10,000 towards our cohort to cover some of the stipend or some of the tuition costs for the five people from Olmsted County. So they are, they have been asked to present <laughs> at an event coming up on October 17th, which is kind of like a healing forest celebration for those five folks from Olmsted County who are funded through Olmsted County Public Health. And so they're going to be giving almost like their final presentation. So whatever you put together for that could be used as your final presentation if you want, that works. Um, and Aita, you know, she's in Hawaii now, but I've talked with her and she's just going to put together a little video and send me the, actually she's going to upload it to YouTube. Um, so that, that'll work fine. Um, and then we'll have two more check-ins. We'll have a check-in in October and we'll have a check-in in November. Similar thing just to share, you know, what have you been doing over the past month and how can we help you if you're struggling to get those six walks in? I get, I get a lot of requests to do walks. So if people are looking for walks, I can definitely help um, kind of bring you in on some of those walks if you're interested. Um, yeah, that was kind of all I really had. I just wanted to do a quick check-in. I know everybody's busy and I apologize. We didn't do a couple of these over the summer, but I think everybody was busy enough that it probably wasn't the end of the world that we didn't have more meetings. So are there any questions yeah. or anything before we log off? There was a request to send the debrief forms again, please. 
Sure, I'll re-email that and I'll re-email the criteria for the final presentations too. Sounds so, good. Sarah, I'll send I... you the recording. Sounds good. Wait, let, Laura had do, a question. Do you have to do you have to get off right away? Is Nicole hosting? I don't know. I can because I was around. gonna ask you a question about the Cascade Meadow um event that's coming up. I can okay. make you host. Sarah, because I do have to go. That okay. Is... okay, awesome. Good. I okay. think it'll work. I don't know. It's a it looks Alabama like it. Account. It looks like you changed to her. Yeah. It's okay. a U of M account, so I'm not sure. Okay, we'll try. Okay, we'll give it a try. Otherwise, I can just call you on the phone too if okay. that works. So yep. everybody else is welcome to hop off unless you have other questions or anything. Angela, did you have something? Yeah, I was just gonna say um, if Nicole could resend, I just I can't find it. I can't find the Zoom healing cohort check-ins anywhere on my email. Will you e email uh, Angela? Put your email real quick in the chat and make sure I have the right ones, or the right email for you. Otherwise, keep up the great work, everybody. I know everybody's working hard. Yeah, I was okay. just like, I don't know where it went. All right, Angela, I'll double check real quick. I, I believe it was sent to me at some point. Like I'm sure in July, I think. Or yeah, I went back to July yeah. and I looked and I can't. And I put in Nicole, I put her name in, mm -hmm. I put your name in, I put Keeling Cohart in. It pulls up the most recent ones, but none of the late ones. And then it pulls up a bunch of Project Go stuff. And I'm oh, like, yeah. <laughs> it's the same. Yeah. I'll just double check and re-invite you. Bye. Wonderful. Bye, Bye. everybody who didn't hop off. We'll be in touch. Thank Keep you. Up the good work. Yep. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so, <Okay>. my Hi. <laughs> so, hey. I got... You were on the initial email about this. Um, remember this forest bathing walk that yeah, I can't participate in right, that because right. I had some. Yeah. Yes. So she just emailed me and I just want to get your input on a few things. Okay. So she sent this is Kate Connor. So she sent yep. me the flyer and I, I committed to it and I don't have a problem with it. Um okay. So and I'll ask her some details too, but if she wants me to lead one walk from 11 to 11 30 and another from 1 to 1 30. yeah so short i've done a lot of those too though does she what, what are, you... are the ages i don't know i have yeah. to ask her it's really it's really and then she asked what the maximum number of people i could take and she's still looking for one to two more people to lead walks oh wow. i know that nobody in rochester i think we had that conversation and I was the only one that could. Should I email the monarch cohort and see? Like Mary, maybe Mary would want to come and do it or well they so Olmstead County Parks has staff that do mindfulness and nature walks. They're not forest bathing, but they're pretty darn oh. close. Because I led walks for all their staff and they took notes. They had me send them my script. I said, you cannot copy this because it's ANFT, but you can build something off of it. So they have their own thing they call That's nature mindfulness. Either. Yeah, maybe she's just having other people do it. Yeah, yeah or you could, she's yeah. not asking me, but should I, should I, I'll ask her, clarify, like, are you getting your own other people? How many people would you do at a time? I'd say 20 max. That's what I, I think, think because. Yeah. And I don't know what the age group is either. So it's like, um, what are yeah, we, I 20 need, kindergartners? What are we talking I need about? To ask that. But like the, the event is like 10 o'clock self-guided walk i know what it is i know what it is they she was part of that greater minnesota greater rochester yes. leadership cohort and they created forest bathing signs to put at five parks and this is like the launch like the yeah. unveiling of the signs and that's what it is so that's why they wanted forest bathing walks to show them like the signs are kind of they're mm -hmm. a second place if you can't actually go on a guided walk the signs right. are kind of to help you do it on your own yeah so, I was I would thinking, say, yeah. Oops, sorry. I was thinking 20 to 20 also because, right. but then it says lunch in, in um, parentheses, first 100 attendees. 
I don't know. We'll see what happens. Right? I guess this yeah. must just be at the Cascade Meadow area, like the trails there. I'll have to go look yeah. at it to see where I want to be. Okay. I did a uh, training there. Yeah, I did a training there. She's a, my kid is being a stinker because he knows. I, I hope can't she stopped the recording. Did she stop the recording yet? No, it's still oh, going. No. 